Welcome to Hockey East Officiating Clips for the 2017-2018 NCAA Men's Ice Hockey Season. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Now it's time for the NCAA Rules Question of the Week. Prior to the game, the on-ice officials are notified there will be one media timeout per period, taken at the first opportunity to legally take the timeout after the 10-minute mark of the period. At the first stoppage after the 10-minute mark of the period that permits a media timeout, the visiting team knows a media timeout should be taken and brings their team to the bench in preparation for the timeout. At this stoppage, the ice crew does not come onto the ice, and the off-ice officials do not signal the horn to take the timeout. Planning to use this media timeout to rest his players, the visiting coach protests and then uses his timeout to rest his players. If a planned media timeout is not taken at the appropriate time during the game, should the visiting coach have to take his timeout in this situation? We'll have the answer later in the video. This week's video concerns icing, offsides, and linesman positioning, along with the answer to our question of the week. Per the rulebook, our point of demarcation for calling icing under the new hybrid icing is the face-off dots. However, it's a common misconception that it's a race to the dots between the attacking and defending team. This is not entirely correct. The race to the dots is important, however the determining factor at the face-off dots is who is going to win the race to the puck, not necessarily who gets to the dot first. Let's look at this example from last season at UMass. In this instance, both players reach the face-off dots at approximately the same time. However, the linesman correctly recognizes that the UMass player will win the race to the puck and correctly determines that icing shall not be called. Had the linesman been unable to determine who was going to win the race to the puck, icing should have been called. In instances where a linesman cannot clearly determine who will play the puck first as the players reach the face-off dots, icing shall be called in every instance to maintain player safety. In this icing clip, the Providence player chips the puck off the glass and we have a potential icing situation. During the race for the puck, the Providence player number 18 changes his skating lane and impedes the Merrimack forward from potentially winning a race to the puck. The linesman in this play correctly recognizes this situation and waves off. It should be noted that the Providence player number 18 runs the risk of earning himself a penalty for interference on this play too. The attacking player at the point receives a pass and it jumps over his stick. The linesman correctly positions himself with an aggressive sight line to see inside the player and have a sight line on the determining edge of the zone to correctly see the puck leave the zone. Had the linesman been positioned outside of the zone, he would have had to look through the skates of the defender and would have been unable to determine the exact location of the puck. Linesmen need to fight for the best sight line possible on plays, being careful not to be screened out by players. Now it's time for the answer to the question of the week. Prior to the game, the on-ice officials are notified there will be one media timeout per period, taken at the first opportunity to legally take the timeout after the 10-minute mark of the period. At the first stoppage after the 10-minute mark of the period that permits a media timeout, the visiting team knows a media timeout should be taken and brings their team to the bench in preparation for the timeout. At this stoppage, the ice crew does not come onto the ice and the off-ice officials do not signal the horn to take the timeout. Planning to use this media timeout to rest his players, the visiting coach protests and then uses his timeout to rest his players. If a planned media timeout is not taken at the appropriate time during the game, should the visiting coach have to take his timeout in this situation? The answer is no. The coach should not have to take his timeout in this situation. If a planned media timeout is not taken, the on-ice officials should confer, 
ensure that the timeout can be taken at this stoppage of play, and then notify the off-ice officials and the ice crew that immediate timeout will be taken. The visiting coach should not be forced to take his timeout due to an error by the off-ice and on-ice officials. Media timeouts can take place at any stoppage, except for immediately after goals or when one team is on the power play or penalty kill. Please note, a timeout may be taken at the stoppage of play when a penalty is assessed or when the on-ice strength for both teams is equal, for example, during a 4-on-4 situation. Additionally, media timeouts cannot take place after the play is stopped and one team is not permitted to make a line change. These situations include icing infractions, hand pass situations in the defensive zone, when the defending team is responsible for the net coming off the goal pegs, or when the puck is shot out of play by the defending team in the defensive zone. This task should be part of the pregame routine for our officials. As always, if you have questions or comments regarding these clips, please contact Dan Shakti, coordinator of officials for Hockey East. Thanks and have a great weekend of games. Skate hard and safe travels.